Hello, Destiny Travelers. Welcome to my Facebook Live. As you come in, go ahead and like this video, comment, let me know where you are watching from. Let me know that you are on here. Say your name and say where you're watching from. As you come in, I'm going to share this video to my live stream as well. If I'm able to, it kind of gives me a problem when I try to go on and share it to my page. So sometimes I have to wait <laughs> for a minute. I guess Facebook has to like get the message that we're live or that we are on a live stream and then they'll share it. I don't know how that goes or how that works, but as you come in, go ahead and share this video. Invite somebody on, tag someone, share it to their message thread, share it to their inbox. Let somebody know that they need to be watching. Um, I begin to sit with God this morning as I do every morning, and I begin to just uh, meditate upon the Lord and ask Holy Spirit what we should talk about today. And um since Wednesday, we talked about why you are losing, I wanted to address seven reasons why we have spiritual warfare. Type in the comments, why is there warfare? Um, sometimes people think that they are on the wrong path, that they may have done something wrong. Um, sometimes people don't understand the resistance and all of the things that they've had to walk through. Good morning. Uh, thank you for joining. And a lot of times, if we don't understand why we have warfare, why the enemy attacks us, why the things happen to our children, why we grew up the way we grew up, why we had to experience some of the things that we had to experience, we'll understand spiritual warfare and we'll be better armed with the intelligence that we need to overcome. And sometimes because we are not armed with the proper things that we need when we engage in spiritual warfare, we lose. On Wednesday, we talked about why are you losing? God did not create his people to be losers. When you accepted Jesus Christ, hear me, and you became a born again believer, you were recreated with a new DNA. We talked about this before on a previous live, where when we accept Jesus Christ and we come into the family of God, we have a new DNA. So it's as if you get a redo. Type in the comments, I have a redo. So God wants to start us having to live life in a brand new way with a new lease on life. The old people used to sing this song when they accepted Jesus Christ. They said, I looked at my hands and my hands were new. I looked at my feet and my feet were too. So life began to be new because when we are in Christ, we are a new creation. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. But what the enemy likes to do is like, he likes to keep you bound to the old way of life. But you have to begin to step into the new dimension and live life in the realm of the spirit. When we try to live life in two different realms, we are not armed properly for the battles that we will face because everything is seen through a carnal lens. But when you begin to live life in the spirit, you begin to understand spiritual matters and you begin to win every battle. Type in the comments, I was not born to lose. When God created you and when God reestablished you in him through the seed of Christ, not Adam. Those, <laughs> when we are in, in Adam's seed, when we are in the carnal man, when we live life according to the flesh, we are losers. But when we live life according to our new DNA, according to the new creation that we are in Christ Jesus, we win. Type in the comments, I win. 
Yes, you win over sickness. You win over oppression. You win over depression. You win over um, marital issues and trauma and drama and your children going astray. You win those things because you have everything inside you pertaining to life and godliness. So there are seven reasons why we have spiritual warfare. On Wednesday, if you were not on that live on Wednesday and heard the things we talked about on why you are losing battles, why are you not seeing victory in your life? You want to go back and watch that. Seven reasons why you have spiritual warfare. So one, the first reason why we have spiritual warfare. Let me let me first say this. I want to invite you to our conference April 28th and April 29th in Hyatt Deerfield. You don't want to miss it. If you're interested in coming to that conference, go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com and purchase your ticket and meet us April 28th and 29th in Hyatt Deerfield. So seven reasons why we have spiritual warfare. Um, the first reason is we're all born into a battle. Psalms 51 and five says, behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And here John three and 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the first reason, type reason number one, we're all born into this battle. There's a battle that is waging that happened way before you were born, way before your grandmother, your great grandmother, over 2000 years ago, when the enemy decided to create an insurrection in heaven. And he decided that he wanted to exalt himself and promote himself before God gave him a promotion. He wanted to exalt himself. He wanted to go higher. So we're all born into this spiritual battle. These are the seven reasons why we have spiritual warfare. We were born in sin. We came into this world because of the fall of Adam. In God's original design, all of us were living connected to God, enjoying fellowship when Adam and Eve were created and, and placed inside the Garden of Eden. Everything that they had was readily available to them. The ground yielded effortlessly. They had fellowship and communion with God. They were able to directly converse with God and God with them. So because sin now, the thing that God hated, it entered man. And so from that time when Eve and Adam uh, were involved in the insurrection in the garden, sin, the thing God hated, entered man. The enemy thought he could provoke God's hand to destroy man. But God but the triune God always had it in their intention to send Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ came into the earth to win back the territory. Type in the comments, we win. Jesus Christ came into the earth when sin entered the heart of man. The plan was that Jesus Christ would come and he would win back territory. He would win back the hearts of humanity. He would win back the ground that he, that the enemy had stolen through beguiling Eve and seducing her flesh and causing her to go against God. So here we are all born into this battle of territory. The ground and the battle and the spiritual warfare is all about the heart. Who can win the heart? Can God win the heart or can the enemy win the hearts of humanity? So this battle is to win back the heart of humanity, taking as many people as possible. John 3, 16 said, for God so loved, he loved, his affection was towards the world, everybody that's in it, that he sent his son 
to die. He sent his son to do something that was so in our human mind absurd that we had to receive this thing by faith and by understanding spiritual laws and understanding how things operate. So you experience warfare, number one, because you were born into a battle between good and evil over the territory of your heart. So there is always going to be a battle for the ground of your heart. The enemy will always try to use tactics, tricks, weaponry to win the battle of your heart. Out of the abundance of our heart, our mouth will speak. It is the heart that is deceitful, the Bible says, above all things and desperately wicked, Jeremiah talks about. Who can know this heart except God? So he tries the reins of our heart. God uses evil and God uses good. He has control of it all, but we have to choose him in the battle. We talked about on a previous live, having to choose a side. What side are you choosing? What side are you leaning on? Go ahead. If you're on the Lord's side, type in the comments, make that confession. I'm on the Lord's side. So seven reasons why you have spiritual warfare. We talked about Wednesday, why you keep losing these battles. Why aren't you seeing forward momentum? So today we're going to talk about why you have spiritual warfare in the first place? Because you were born into a battle. Number two, spiritual choices and curses. We have spiritual warfare because we are, we are born into iniquity. We are born into the sin of our forefathers. It's important to know God and know how the spiritual world operates. When God looks at you, Yolanda, he's just not seeing you. He's seeing your children and your children's 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 children. We look at how God dealt with the children of Israel and the children of Israel. He wanted to be the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And oftentimes when he referred to himself or when the children of Israel referred to God, they would say the, the God of Abraham, our father, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. God is just not interested in winning one person. He wants to win what? The world. For God so loved the world. So his plan is to win one heart at a time. And in winning one heart at a time, he can get the descendants of that individual and their descendants and their descendants because the legacy of Christ and the legacy of righteousness will be passed on from generation to generation. But because of wrong choices, wrong patterns, hearts that are not yielded fully to God, in the bloodline, we pass on generational inclinations. We pass on generational sins. We pass on generational patterns. We see this in the life of the children of Israel. Why do you have spiritual warfare? Because you're repeating patterns that your mother did. Your mother, um, um, choices, patterns and choices and uh proclivities that your mother and your father had that are not according to righteousness or according to the will of God for your bloodline. So we have generational choices and curses, iniquity that is bound in the heart because hearts are not fully yielded to God in the spirit, walking according to the spirit and not the flesh. Second Chronicles chapter 30 and verse seven, and be not like your father's, here it is. And like your brethren, which trespass against the Lord, their God, uh, the Lord God of their fathers, who therefore gave up to desolation, as ye see. So we see here in 2 Chronicles 30 and 7, God is imploring them to don't do things like your father did. Don't do things like your sister, your brother, your cousin, your niece, your nephew, your uncle. Don't do things like they did when they gave up themselves to desolation. They gave up themselves to wrong motives, 
uh, unproductive things. They didn't produce anything, anything in their lives because they trespassed against God. They went against the commands of God. They did not follow his voice. They did not adhere to everything that he desired for that people. So they experienced generational choices that never produced fruit. So we have to do something different. Type in the comment, I vow to make a change. God wants the buck to stop with you. God wants to rewrite the history with you. God wants to pass on a holy and righteous legacy so that your children, Dr. Neal, and your children's 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 children will know him in a very real way. And they'll begin to say the God of my grandfather, Dr. Neal, the God of my father, Gary Jr., the God of my father, they'll begin to pass on a righteous legacy. Number two, we have spiritual warfare because we are making the same wrong choices. We are treating our children like our fathers did. Now, if, if, if you had a great legacy and your, your parents passed on holiness and righteousness, Kudos to you. God is doing something amazing with your bloodline. But where they did not make the right choices, where they did not follow God fully, you have to become one that will walk in the spirit and not according to the flesh to change the bloodline, that you pass on a clean bloodline, that you teach your children like God told the children of Israel, teach your children wherever you go, talk to them about things, talk to them while you're in the market, talk to them while you're in the way. And we see in the book of Proverbs over and over again, where the writer is imploring instructions coming from the fathers and the mothers that they teach their children. And this is important because if you don't teach your children why grandfather failed, why grandmother failed, why the divorce failed, why things didn't work out, you're going to keep those patterns and cycles going and your children will fall ignorantly because they may think that it's them, but you're holding back little secrets, okay? So you're holding back what happens in this house stays in this house and nobody talks about what's gone on in this house. No, God wants to bring what's in the dark to the light, empower the next generation with the wisdom they need in order to avert and uh, thwart the demonic attacks that will come through generational choices. So he says, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings, therefore choose life that both you and thy seed may live. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 30 and 19, here is the thing, share the video. I believe this is going to help somebody because this has helped me in my walk with God to understand these different reasons why we experience generational, why we experience warfare and generational choices and how to change things. Type in the comments, I am a change agent. We don't, when we are in Christ, we don't run away from trouble. We face it and we win. We don't run from battles. We face them. We fight through them and we change the narrative. So Deuteronomy 30 and 19 is saying, you have a choice. Your choice is so powerful. Here it is that you can choose life or death. You can choose a, a better way of living or you can choose damnation. He says, I set both of these choices before you. God is not going to wrestle us down to help us make a choice. He says, I'm setting them before you and I'm giving you the free will to choose. I'm giving you the free will to choose the blessing that I will pronounce on you because of your choice. And I am putting you in a position where you have free will to choose death. But if you choose death, you will be cursed. The book of Judges, hear me, over and over again, talks about 
and the children of Israel. Just about every other chapter, maybe every chapter that you go through in the book of Judges, and you can read it in your own time. The book of Judges talks about, and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord turned them over into the hand of their enemy. Every time, hear me, we make the wrong choice when we use our free will. God has given us all free will to make the wrong choice. It brings about a curse in our lives. What is a curse? A judgment that is negative upon your life and your seed. Your choices bring about a curse. Your negative choices bring about a curse upon your seed. Oh, Jesus. But your positive, your God, your life choice brings about blessings. And in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it gives you the list of cursings and blessings. What you'll receive when you choose right, when you choose life, when you choose to walk with God, but when you choose death. Now here it is, hear me. The enemy who is a master deceiver and a manipulator because he's been doing this over 2000 years. He is an ancient foe. We have to become wise, discerning, and understand God. If we don't know God, we will fall prey to the lies of the enemy. The Bible says not only does he lie, but he embodies a lie. He is a lie. He becomes that thing in which he engages in. Same with us. We become transgressors. We become whoremongers. We become unclean when we engage. We take on that identity, that nature, when we engage in things that are not, uh, um, um, what, 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 indicative to life. So God says, I set before you. He sets before us choices and we have to make the right choices. Type in the comments. It's time to make a change. God wants your grandchildren to know about him. God wants your children. What is he saying when he says, talk to your children, give them instruction, talk to them when they're on the way. He wants to be a family member. He wants to be somebody that you talk to as if he visits your house on a daily basis. He wants your children to know him. He wants your grandchildren to know who he is. He wants to be a regular attendee of your home, not somebody that is far removed, far away, a mystical creature. No, he wants you to tell your children to ask God. Did you ask God? Did you pray about that? He wants you to teach your children how to engage the God that you serve. So what, what are the seven reasons why we experience spiritual warfare? Because we're born in it. Number two, because we have generational choices that bring life and death, but we have to choose life because he sets before us choices. He's not going to bend our will. He's going to allow us to choose. But here is the thing. We have to become discerning to know when the enemy is manipulating our choices. We do that because we have a heart after God and we continually to bring our heart before him. Number three, you're in training for reigning. You may experience spiritual warfare. Here it is, Yolanda, because you're in training for reigning. Type in the comments. He's teaching me through the warfare. If a, a soldier never engages in um, pre-combat, what do they call it? Boot camp, right? Where he's learning how to battle, where he's learning how to respond. He may, they may use weaponry that are, uh, what do they call bullets? that really don't hurt you, but they are blanks. <laughs> so you're in training for reigning where the bullets that hit you won't hurt you, but it's teaching you how to engage in combat. He's teaching you through the warfare that you may experience. 
<clears throat> because there's something in your life where you have to know how to engage in battle, where God wants to elevate you to the ministry that God wants to give you. There may be something that he has for you that he has assigned you to, but you're going to have to learn how to engage in warfare in order to be victorious in that reigning. You're in training for reigning. Psalms 144 and 1. Share this video so that somebody can be empowered and edified and encouraged through this teaching. Psalms 144 and 1 of David, praise be to the Lord, my rock, who trains, here it is, my hands for war, my fingers for, for battle. If you never engage in warfare, how will you be trained on how to fight? If you never experience any spiritual warfare, how will you be trained? Here it, here it is. When people go to boot camp, first thing that they are given is their gun. I was talking to my brother who is a National Guard um, a recruit or he's in the National Guard. And so he, I asked him, I said, what is the first thing that they do when you go to boot camp? He said, the first thing that we get when we enlist is our gun. He says, we get our gun and we are taught how to dismantle, how to put together, how to use our gun. My God. And the Bible is our weapon of choice. It is written, Jesus said in the wilderness, when the enemy came against him to attack him and beguile him and entice him um, according to the flesh. He said, it is written. So first thing that we should get is the word of God and prayer. The first things that we should get is the word of God to be armed in order to pray. So how does he teach our hands to war and our fingers to fight if we're never in boot camp? Some of the things that you go through, you have to go through so that he can teach you. But you have to have your ear close to the voice of the teacher. Who is the teacher? The teacher is the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. When you walk with God, when you walk with the Holy Spirit, he'll begin to teach you how to fight. He'll begin to teach you how to use your weapons. He'll begin to teach you how to engage combat and battles. He'll begin to teach you how to win. He'll begin to teach you how to wage war. Here it is. After the after the spirit and not the flesh. Sometimes we lose in spiritual warfare because we're fighting with the flesh. We're fighting with spiritual, we're fighting a spiritual battle with carnal weapons and you will never win a spiritual battle using carnal weapons. You have to learn how to use your weaponry. Here it is. Second Corinthians 10 and four says, for the weapons, my God, we use these scriptures, but we really don't understand the significance and the power behind the word of God and how we gain victory over the enemy. How do you rewrite the destiny of your bloodline, of your family, of your lineage? There is a call and a mandate that God has ordained for the Neo bloodline. But if we never understand these spiritual laws, and if we never engage in spiritual battles and we never understand even the basics on how to win the hearts of our children, how to change things in the realm of the spirit, we will constantly lose battles because we don't understand why we experience warfare. He says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. The only way you can use these weapons is through God and Christ Jesus. The only way that you can engage in spiritual warfare is through God and Christ Jesus, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Those strongholds are not only just in your mind, but those strongholds are in the minds of those that are coming against you as well. You are you begin to cast down those strongholds. You begin to wage war against the enemy who has captivated the hearts of humanity to come against you. That boss, that mother-in-law, that sister-in-law, that brother-in-law, that friend, that uh, co-worker, that milkman, Man, whoever it is that the enemy has 
won the territory of their heart to come against you, you have spiritual weapons to bring down the strongholds, the high things, the wicked imagination, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? Everything that God has said concerning you, everything that God has planned for your life, everything that God is, the enemy wants to fight against it. Everything that that God has said and spoken over your life, over your seed, over your bloodline. The enemy wants to stop and hinder and thwart the plan of God for your life. So seven reasons why we engage in spiritual warfare, because we were born in it, because there are generational choices and curses, because he's training you for reigning. Number four, type number four, you were born with a kingdom agenda. My God today, is this good? If this is good to you, type fire. You were born with the kingdom agenda. Sometimes we engage in spiritual warfare as children. Sometimes as children, as young adults, as teenagers, as we are coming up, we experience so much warfare. Share this video to your timeline. Share it to somebody so that you can understand and they can understand the basic reasons why they experience warfare, why they experience trouble, why they experience tribulation and how to overcome. You were born with the kingdom agenda. Here it is. In Matthew chapter two, we see the birth of Christ and we see the attack of the enemy against the agenda of God. If there is a mandate on your life, here it is. Jesus was a baby, but there was warfare all around him. Jesus, as a baby, did not know the kingdom agenda in which he came into the earth. Jesus, as an infant, did not know that he would be the savior of the world. But those that were given uh, to have authority over his care until he came to the point of being who he was supposed to be as in his maturity, the son of God, they had to protect what God placed in him. If God wants to use you in any capacity, there will be warfare from the time that you get here. My God. And I'm going to read this because I thought it was just so profound because sometimes people go through things even as children and our parents don't protect us. Our parents don't cover us. Our parents are ignorant. Our parents might not be believers, but we go through things. We go through molestation, abuse, bullying, and all sorts of things as teenagers where the enemy wants to depress us and keep us subservient to the flesh. But when we come into the kingdom of God, we have a mandate to grow in God to the degree that we come into the destiny. What is the destiny? The kingdom agenda and why you were sent here. Jesus was sent here and he was marked by God for a specific assignment to the degree that his name, my God, which is the name above every name, was his name embodied and identified his purpose and his destiny and what he was supposed to walk out. So we experience that warfare because we are marked by God. God has an agenda for our lives. There is a greater reason why you came into the earth. There may be a great mandate on your life, but if you don't get in the realm of the spirit, you won't see that there has to be something in me that the devil fights me tooth and nail for everything that I have. Everything that I get has to be a fight. Why is there such resistance? Because you are marked by God. So Matthew chapter two says, and this is around verse nine, after they heard the king, and this was the magi that were seeking out Jesus and the astrologers, they understood that something significant was happening. They saw Jesus' star and they started to seek him out. The enemy is looking for those who are born into the earth realm, who are stars. My God, type stars in the comments. If this is good to you, I want you to share this because this is blessing me. If it's blessing you, type stars in the comments, type fire in the comments. 
share it, invite somebody on, somebody that you know that is engaging in strong spiritual warfare and they're trying to understand why they have to fight so hard, why everything is so hard in their lives. It's because they are marked. It's because there is an agenda that God has sent them into the earth to fulfill and the enemy wants to block that agenda. So after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped. Here it is. They're following a star. Could this star be angelic, a host? Could this star be angels leading them to where Jesus is? Because the Bible says the star led them there and the star stopped above the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Why were they overjoyed? Because of a star, <clears throat> a simple star. I propose that this star was an angel, angel being that was leading them to where Jesus was. But because they were astrologers, they understood the stars and how the stars aligned and what the stars looked like. But there was a particular star that did not look like the others. There was a particular star that night that didn't shine. Mm, my God, I feel the weight on this revelation like the others. And they began to seek out this star and they began to follow this star. And when this star stopped above where Jesus was, they began to follow the prophecies. They begin to follow all of the things that was uh, written down and all of the things that were spoken of previously to understand what was happening in the realm of the spirit. They may have been sons of Issachar that was discerning the times and the seasons. What are you bringing to the table? My God, what are you bringing to the kingdom of God? What are you bringing to humanity? What invention is on the end? inside of you? What book is on the inside of you? What gift is on the inside of you that the devil wants to destroy? So when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. Why were they overjoyed at a star? They see stars all the time. They see stars daily. This is what they did. So why would it? Because it was not just an original star on coming to the house. My God, they saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to the country by another route. So if we know the story of Jesus's birth, Herod was trying to seek and kill uh, the king of the Jews that was coming into the earth. He did not want competition. He wanted to be the only ruler. He wanted to be the only one that was reigning on a throne. And he was trying to get these magi to give up the secret. He was trying to get them to be the leak, mm, the door, the heart that the enemy could use to give up the placement of Jesus, to give up intel, to give up detail, to be a monitoring spirit into the life of Jesus. Jesus so that he could destroy the plan of God. But all of those that God chose mm, to reveal this revelation to were full of God. They loved God. They were obedient unto God and they protected the secret details of the kingdom of God. They protected the secret revelation of what, what God was doing. They protected the gift. They protected the calling. They protected the mandate. If God shows the wrong people who you are, they will give up details. They will give up information. They would may be a monitoring spirit sent by hell to destroy what God has placed in you. Sometimes God is protecting you from those who will not protect what he placed in you. So my God today, they had, they had gone 
an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. So these wise men begin to hear the voice of the Lord in a dream and they did not go back to Herod. They did not obey what Herod told them to do. Come back to me and tell me so I can go worship him too. They knew that there was a lie. The, the angel of the Lord told them go a different route. Don't even go back to him because what he is trying, this is spiritual warfare here. This is a midst of a battle for the heart of Jesus, for the mission of God, for John 3, 6, 16, why Jesus came, because God loved. They were protecting God's love for humanity, which was wrapped up in a little baby who did not understand who he was. My God. So they escaped. Joseph got up after he had that dream. His, his, this is warfare. When you're in the midst of warfare, God's going to be giving you direction and instruction on how to defeat the enemy. He's going to be giving you intel. He's going to be giving, telling you what the other side is doing. My God, he told them, Herod is doing this. So this is what I need you to do. So when you're in the midst of warfare, you got to obey the instructions. You got to obey what God is saying. He's going to tell you, leave here and go there. This is what I want you to do. You need to, in, you need to camp in here. You need to move your family. You need to cut that individual off. You need to go a different route. You need to move churches. You need to write a book. He's going to be giving you the details that you need to overcome the plans of the enemy. So God tells Joseph to go and do take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. And I'm going to go down. So a lot of things begin to transpire and happen. And so according to the word of the Lord, Jesus had to come out of Nazareth. So God had to get them to a certain place to fulfill the will of God. And so that the plans of God happen according to what was written. They had to get in the right place to align with the will of God. They had to go to the right temple. They had to be connected to the right individuals that would protect Jesus while he was growing, learning and maturing and learning how to operate in his assignment. Sometimes when we come into the kingdom of God and there is a kingdom agenda on our lives, when we are marked by God and we, and we have not gotten to our fullness of how Jesus began to stand up in, I, and declare in the temple uh, uh, the book of Isaiah and the people that heard him that day were offended because Jesus said, this scripture is now fulfilled in your hearing. My God, the word of the Lord was, a, was already written concerning Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord was already given in the book of Isaiah. Jesus was already prophesied. And as Jesus grew and as he submitted to his mother and father, he began to understand as he began to engage God, as he began to spend time with his father in heaven, he began to learn who he was. He began to learn about the mandate and why he was sent into the earth. He began to uh, receive the instructions of the Lord. The things in which he knew in heaven began to be downloaded into his spirit. He began to be filled with the Holy Spirit as he submitted his flesh unto his parents and to God. But here it is, the kingdom of agenda in Jesus was protected by those who received revelation. Those who could be trusted with the intel, those who were not offended by his divinity, by his great assignment as savior of the world, they were protected with the revelation of who he is. So why do you experience spiritual warfare? There may be people around you that the enemy can use them as monitoring spirits. There are people around you that the enemy can use them to destroy what's in you. So you have to get around the right company. You have to be in the right place. Ask the Lord, am I in the right place? place? Am I in the right church? Am I connected to the right people? Is this my tribe? Should I have a different spiritual father or mother? Where do you want me to go to protect? One, you got to ask, Lord, what did you put in me? What's in me that the devil wants to destroy me? What's in me that the enemy keeps fighting me? Okay. So number five, 
why you have spiritual warfare. You're on the right path or the wrong path. <laughs> so our relationship with Jesus will reveal which path we're supposed to be on. First Thessalonians 2 and 2 says, we have previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our Lord, God, our God, we dare to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. When you're on the right path, when you're doing the will of God, the enemy will oppose you. It will happen. People will come against you. You will have warfare when you stand for the truth. When you decree wrong is wrong and right is right. People who are for wrong will pile up together. They will. And they may not even like each other. They may not even have ever had a meal together, but they'll come together to come against you. Why? Because the enemy has the territory of their hearts and they'll come against you to make you back down from the truth. So opposition comes when you're on the right path or the wrong path. What do I mean by this? You got to follow the voice of the Lord. So when you're on the wrong path, God will cause things to shake up, to get you on the right path. Just like in the life of, of uh, Joseph. Joseph experienced spiritual warfare to get him on the right path. He had to go before his family to preserve a nation. So God allowed the enemy to, um, which was already there. They already were jealous of him, but they, their hearts were able to even be captivated by the enemy even the more because they had their own jealousy, but they allowed the grounds of their heart to be even more jealous, the more God revealed to Joseph who he was, the more God showed Joseph everything that he wanted to do with him and through him, they hated him the more, the scripture said. So, so when God wants to get you someplace, he has to, he allows that warfare to shake things up, to get you on the right path. Joseph had to get to Egypt to preserve the children of Israel. Joseph had to get to Egypt to preserve the children of Israel from the incoming famine. They had, he had to be sent before them, but the only way Joseph, um, could have gotten there was through the, um, Hearts of his brothers. That's how God, that God used that vehicle to get Joseph to where he needs to be. So if Joseph was on the wrong path, meaning he needed to get somewhere to help the agenda of God, God used that warfare to get Joseph on the right path. Okay. So we always have to stay close to the Lord, abide in him and follow the voice of God. My sheep, here it is, know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. We will not follow anyone that's speaking strangely, anyone that's speaking outside of the will of God and the word of God. Those that know their God, the scripture says, shall do great and mighty exploits. The only way that you're gonna be able to execute great things for God is when you know him. You wanna get in the word of God, know the character of God, spend time with God, know the voice of God, know how he sounds when he's speaking through through vessels and individuals. And so, that's something we have to spend time with God. And that's something that we gain. Uh, the more we spend time with him, the more we uh, are in his presence, the more we worship him, the more we're in the word, we'll be accustomed to the voice of the shepherd. Okay. So number six, we're almost done here. We engage in spiritual warfare because there are legal rights. Type that in the comments. There are legal rights. What do I mean by that? In the spiritual realm, there are laws and principles. Revelations 12, 9 through 11 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser, hear this, of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. So 
in Revelation, we see God talking about the accuser being cast down, being dealt with, being taken out, being taken down. Um, his authority is stripped from him. Um, and he gives us a peek into the, the enemy's um, engagements, if I want to use that word. He says, the accuser of our brethren, which accuses them before God day and night. So there are accusations that the enemy comes before God and accuses us. We look at the life of Job and we see somewhat of an accusation against Job and God, where he says, the only reason why Job is serving you is because you have a hedge about him. You have, you have get, hedged him in, in on every side. He wants for nothing. The only reason why he's serving you, God, is because you take care of him so well, because you have provided for him so well. That's the only reason why he serves you the way he does, because the Bible says Job was a perfect and an upright man. He shunned evil. He offered up sacrifice, sacrificial prayers and sacrifices for his children. He covered his family. He covered everything that was connected to him. So the enemy brought an accusation against Job's heart posture saying there might be something in Job's heart and he's only serving you because of what you give him. But we know Job overcame because God knew Job's heart. God knew that Job was only was serving him because he loved God to the degree that when Job lost everything, there was still no accusation. When his, the closest person to him, his wife told him to curse God and die, curse God and give up the ghost, curse God and give up your spirit, your spirit, curse God and just, just go away, curse God. She was in such grief about the things that she lost. She was in such disbelief. She was in su such devastation that the enemy was able to use her heart to speak out the very thing that God, that the enemy said he would get Job to do. He said, I'm going to get Job to curse you to your face. And the enemy used the closest thing to Job to get Job to curse God and give it up, die. <laughs> so Ephesians chapter 4, 27 through 30, neither give place to the devil. We do this through sin. We give the enemy opportunities in our lives by our connections. We give the enemy opportunity in our lives by wounds, unhealed wounds of our hearts. When we don't give our whole heart to God and sin, wealth, riches, fame, applause, all of those things we want in our heart above God, we give the enemy place or opportunity when we don't have a solid foundation in the truth and in God. We give the enemy occasion and opportunity where we honor people above God, where we have open doors in our lives, where the enemy can use those doors and cracks in our lives to get a foothold. Ephesians 6, 13, 13 through 18, we give the enemy place when we don't have on the full armor. We have on the full armor of God when we have on the belt of truth, when we walk in truth, when we walk in uh, righteousness, having the breastplate of righteousness to shield our hearts, having the our feet shod and ready with the preparation of the gospel of peace, having uh, the shield of faith, having the helmet of salvation, in our minds, having our minds saved and renewed and washed in the word of God, being able to weld the sword of the spirit, which is God's word. When we put on our full armor, we're able to engage in this spiritual battle, which is prayer, giving occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. Our battle is spiritual. We wage war in prayer. We wage war and we are alert through praying. God tells us things as we pray. God gives us spiritual weaponry, spiritual um, uh, understanding. We know how to use the weapons of our warfare. So the last reason, reason number seven, why we have spiritual warfare is violation of spiritual laws and legalities. 
Jude chapter one, verse eight through nine says this. Nevertheless, in the same way, these dreamers who are dreaming that God will not punish them also defile the body and reject legitimate authority and revile and mock angelic majesties. But even the arch and archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil, Satan, and arguing about the body of Moses, did not dare bring an abusive condemn condemnation against him, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. When we are representative of, representatives of God, when we are sent by God into any matter, when we are sent by God, we have the backing of heaven, but we are not to usurp or do anything that God has not told us to do. There is a day of judgment that is reserved for the enemy. When Michael was disputing over the body of Moses, he did not begin to bring accusations or condemnation or anything against the enemy. He was He's still God's created being. What he did was use the authority and did what God told him to do. He said, I am on assignment from God and God is rebuking you. The Lord is rebuking you. The Lord is stopping you. The Lord is hindering you. The Lord is commanding you. When we operate outside of our authority, when we op operate outside of spiritual laws and legalities, we don't have the backing of heaven. Heaven is not backing us up. But when we operate as God is sending us, make sure you're sent. Make sure you're not going on your own merit. Make sure you're not speaking on your own accord. But be sure God is backing you up. You are violating spiritual laws when you do not have the backing of God. When God isn't sending you to do something, when God isn't authorizing you to get on Facebook, you're engaging in warfare. You're engaging in battles. When God is not telling you to go and pray and do things, you're, in, you're illegally operating spiritually in spiritual matters without the backing of heaven. Everything that you do, this is what Jesus said. If Jesus was subject to this, we too are subject to us, to this. He said, I do nothing except what I see my father do. So God was giving him the dictates. God was giving Jesus the command. God was telling Jesus, go here, go there, do this, do that. Everything that we do, we want to make sure we're being led by heaven. When we do that, heaven is backing us up. When we do that, we're winning. When we do that, we're within the will of God. When we do that, we don't commit violations against spiritual laws and legalities. We don't condemn any being that God has created. The Lord himself has a day reserved of judgment for every created being that will come before him on the day of judgment, whether that is um, early because people die or whether that is on that day as Revelation talks about. So in everything that we do, we wanna be led by the Lord. We wanna ask the Lord, Lord, is this what you want me to do? God confirm that this is your step. This is your movement. Show me what's next, God. What do you want me to do next? How do you want me to do this? How do you want me to execute? How do you want me to handle my children? How do you want me to um, execute these resources that you have placed in my hand? Everything that we do, we want to operate within the spiritual realm properly. We want to do what God tells us to do and say what God tells us to say. Because when we don't, we violate spiritual laws and legalities. Thank you guys for joining me. I pray that you are inspired. Edify April 28th through the 27th. Uh, 20. A through the 29th, meet us in Hyatt Deerfield for our women's conference, Women of Weight 2023. Go to my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com. If you want to watch virtually, we have virtual 
um, options as well. If you want to be in person, come meet us there. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. I pray that you guys enjoy this teaching. Seven reasons why you have spiritual warfare. Meet us there. If you are looking for resources on prayer, spiritual warfare, marriage, um, women, um, edif being edified in your womanhood, go to my website and purchase those resources if you have not done so at www.touchdownsenterprise.com. I'm Sherry Downs. Welcome, Destiny Travelers. I thank you for joining me. I pray that you are inspired and you are blessed. I love you with the love of the Lord and I love you with my love. Be blessed.